What's going on guys? Today we're doing an analysis on GM. I just recently did one on Fords. You can watch that up here if you want to watch that one first. Uh, but we're loading this up in the stock research tool built by yours truly. We're going to run through the numbers and if you're new to the channel, I like to do a fundamental analysis on every company I take a look at. So I like to look at the numbers from five years ago, the present, and predict where I believe this company is going to go. Let me clear this uh, these numbers out here. But that's a, a section of my price analysis section, which will find out the intrinsic value of this company. So we have GM loaded up. This over the last five years, the company has been on a little bit of an interesting slope here. Been climbing up a little bit. Yeah. For most of 2022, we've been on this decline. But coming down here, I'm just taking a little bit of a zoom in. We hit a low of 30 high of 67 the last 52 week range and now we're starting to climb up a little bit most recently warren buffett has decreased his position in gm by about 14 percent um but this is a fairly interesting company and why i say it's interesting is because of their whole ev platform competing against the likes of ford and obviously tesla who's been leading the charge in this ev space so by the numbers with Ford, let's take a look at what's going on. Our five-year averages are on this side of the category compared to our 12 and 12 months. So we, we have pretty much we have pretty low PE ratios all around from our, our five-year average and our 12 and 12 months, as well as our EPS is up over our five-year averages, and our ROE is up as well, along with our profit margin. So off the top, looking at four our first four categories here in terms of where this company is kind of uh lying it's um they they've been making some improvements i like a company that has a low pe ratio i'm a huge fan of that but it's just comforting to see with a pe ratio as low as as it's been right let's say on average it's been 8.13 and our eps has been 3.76 with a lower pe ratio our eps is higher so just, those are just comforting to see i like seeing those numbers increase while that stays low now jumping into our revenue, it's at 132.1 billion dollars. We don't well, we they just reinstated the dividends, so that is coming out, I believe, at nine cents a share. So whatever that works out to be, but our net income is 8.79 billion. Our free cash flow, it our free cash flow is 526.5 million dollars, which on average. Let's take a look at what the cash flow statement saying about uh, GM. Let's see, we'll pull this up. We're going on an annualized basis here. And free cash flow. It looks like it's been, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's been negative a lot. Wow, 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 wow. I don't like seeing that. I don't like seeing a lot of these negative numbers here, folks. See, debt repayment, where is that? Oh boy, I just saw it too. Oh boy. Take it on debt. Let's see what what's their what's their debt to equity looking like? Yikes. Okay, we'll get to that category in a bit in a bit. But negative free cash flow overall with a very low return on invested capital that we're seeing here. Decent Piotrowski score, so they're making some improvements year over year, but a very questionable almond Z score. We don't like seeing that folks. We want to see this number over three, and we don't have that. They had us in the first half, but the bottom half over here not looking too healthy. Let's jump into our financial valuations. Now, what my software does over here, the financial valuations, it takes all the company's cash flow statements, their income statements and balance sheets, and scans them. And from a five-year perspective, basically, it'll track if it's make, been making any improvements or not, and it will award a point if they have been making improvements on these certain categories. So check, take a look at this. We are ranking this company a four out of 10. So let's see what they're doing right and see what they're doing wrong. What they are doing right, as I mentioned earlier, is this PE ratio staying as low as it has been. It's been below the 22.5 where we wanna, where we wanna see these companies being at. And as well as EPS growth is up, net income is up, and a free cash flow technically has been improving but as we can see here, and as we've gone about looking, pulling up our free cash flow here, we've been chilling in the negatives. Not good. Not good. We want to see some positive numbers here, folks. But then that ties back into what we're actually doing here. What are we doing? We're taking on debt to fund a lot of this business. Taking on debt, as we see with the debt to equity. So the massive amounts of debt that we have with GM, that's not looking too great. 
our ROE is, is low compared to what we want it to be. We want to see this number above 15% and we don't have that. So large amounts of debt, low ROE and a current ratio currently sitting at 1.15 based off my financial valuations here. It's not the worst folks. It's not the worst. This is something I could, I could potentially ignore. This just means that they have just enough assets on hands to cover the liabilities. We want to see this number over 1.5, and that's crucial to me because that would indicate that they just have that extra buffer in case things go wrong. They can cover any kind of liabilities if they had to liquefy um, their assets, or you know what I mean. Now jumping in to the other side, where things kind of get a little bit more ugly, we are dil being diluted 1.33 percent. It's not the worst, but over five years. They've been issuing out more shares, so we own less of the company. We don't want to see that. As well as the return on invested capital is low. It's 4.81%. We want to see this number 10% or higher, and unfortunately, we don't have that. But the biggest caveat, folks, the biggest kicker that's going to be putting us down is revenue growth. Negative 5% over the last five years. Our, let's go to the income statement real quick. Take a look at what's going on and seeing what's going on with our revenue. 2021. 127 billion dollars compared to go to 2017 2018 147 145 respectively 2016 166 people it's they've gotten hit massively they got hit massive but it makes some somewhat makes sense they're changing the platform around and the, and i've said this with with ford as well they are in the middle of these growing pains as they switch over from being a petrol based company over to an EV company, there's a lot of changes that are being made within the company as well as they've gone through a pandemic and people weren't really buying used cars or new cars rather because of this whole chip shortage as well as people pro having disposable income to buy a car probably wasn't on the top priority on uh, people's lists, right? We had to deal with this coronavirus and uh, we had no idea where that would leave us in 2020 and 2021 now i would imagine revenue is going to probably be increased uh going forward but it's evident why i got hit here and why we're seeing that decrease in our overall net income or our, our income statement rather but nonetheless it is down and it's not getting any points from me so that's why we're ranking it the way we are so not too thrilled about the financial status of GM, but I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about the future of, these, of all these automotive companies, Ford and GM. But for me, I want to know what the numbers are before I can actually jump in on this. Now, does it, knowing that Warren Buffett's starting to pull out, does that affect my investing investment decision? No, not really, because I want to know where this company lies intrinsically. So what we'll do here, folks, we're going to go into our price analysis section. We're going to price this out. And we'll do a 10 year analysis. I'm going to fill out these lovely boxes to try to see what we should be paying for GM today. So stay tuned while I fill out these boxes. Okay, folks. So before we jump into the price analysis section, if you're enjoying the video so far, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me, means a lot to the channel. This software I have in front of me will be available to you, my viewers and subscribers. So now jumping in, I'll show you what I did. If you're new to the channel, I like to try to stay as conservative as possible to try to emulate where I think this company is going to go over the next 10 years so I did for revenue growth because we've been going down the last little bit I said okay let's say the revenue stays the same hypothetically just kept it at zero and then moderate I did 1% revenue growth over the next 10 years and 2% now they very well could beat these numbers here they very well could beat these numbers here and I hope they do but I'm trying to stay as conservative as possible and to give myself the most margin of safety Profit margin, I'm sticking with numbers that they've given in our five and 10 year range and somewhat boring from our one year range. So that's why they're three, four and four, four and a half. Same thing with free cash flow. Our free cash flow has been absolutely horrendous. So I did zero, one, two. Price of free cash flow, same thing. Um, it's been, it's in a negative number because, well, we have negative free cash flow. It's as simple as that. So I did five, six and seven, as well as PE ratio of five, six, and seven, echoing what we have currently, as well as our five, sticking in that five-year range. So I did, I kept it super low. The desired return of 13%, let's see what that comes out to be. But uh, my main thing is with these, uh, these auto manufacturers, and I feel like we're gonna run into the same problem that Ford has, is, uh, and here it is, folks, I'll just pull up the numbers here. But basically, 
they're in this transition period. It's just whether I think that they can actually pull off what they're doing and be a profitable business in the this EV space. I believe they can. I believe they'll probably be able to level out Tesla quite a bit. Um, based off of these off of these numbers here, eleven dollars comes out to be our average calculation on aggressive side a two percent revenue growth nineteen percent or nineteen percent nineteen dollars and twenty nine cents um, this has to fall quite a bit to be in our wheelhouse so right now it currently is a little bit overvalued uh, when it wow in 2020 it hit seventeen dollars a share Granted, given what we know now, and yeah, it would have it would have been on our wheelhouse to some degree. Now, granted, my revenue growth numbers may have been super conservative. Like we're not even getting numbers here based off of our zero percent revenue growth here. So maybe I should change this to one, and see what we have here, and go one point five, and see where that leaves us. But I do think it's on the overvalued side. Now, granted, and maybe I'm a little bit too conservative, but. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's our because I put zero percent in our free cash flow margin. That's the that's the one thing that's kind of throwing us off here. Let's do zero point five percent. Software doesn't like when you use too many zeros, but hey, man, that's what they that's what they've given us. Twelve dollars, big whoop. Okay, so average calculation comes out to be twelve dollars. Modern on uh, moderate average is eleven. Aggressive average is nineteen twenty nine, and yeah, do you believe that they're going to be able to turn themselves around and actually bring their revenues back up? I think so. I think so. The world is demanding more EVs. The world is obviously turning towards these electric vehicles, and they want something that's more affordable. I believe GM and Ford, for that matter, can fill the gap that Tesla has left in regards to this premium feeling when you say where their lowest vehicle that that it starts at around forty five thousand dollars canadian this is canadian dollars when you buy a tesla model 3. there's a large market for more affordable evs and with gm and ford being the established names that they are they can easily fill that market share as well as they have the manufacturing power to compete with tesla in terms of producing more and more vehicles so it's just what is it going to take for them to get get to that point what's going to happen it was one of two things one the price is going to reach this point here and then we can buy it based off of what we've, what we've been shown because there is value in this company there is value it's just can you get around this debt and uh the negative free cash flow that they currently have and just wait it out or the fundamentals get better they start producing these amazing electric vehicles right and it would justify a potentially higher stock price. We'll see what comes first. We'll have to revisit this company a little bit later on down the line, but I'm excited for their platform. What are your thoughts? If you want to see a company evaluated, write down in the comment section below and let me know what you think about GM and this evaluation. Thank you so much for watching, folks. I will see you in the next one.